Hey guys, Canfo.com is officially live now. Go get your official Canfo merch. The first 50 orders will be shipped within 24 hours, so make sure to be one of the first 50. Don't worry, the rest of the orders will be shipped very quickly as well. We wanted to focus on quality, so we worked really hard on this. Go to Canfo.com today to get your order. Welcome back to America in Black. I'm CBS News Congressional Correspondent <laughs> Nicole Killian. Hey, the Nicole. race for the White House is coming into focus after Super Tuesday. The country appears to be headed toward a rematch between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. But Just like in 2020, black voters will play a critical role in the outcome of this election. More than 34 million African Americans are projected to be eligible to vote this year. And one of the largest blocks of black voters is in Georgia. We travel to the battleground state to hear what people are thinking and feeling about the state of the presidential race in 2024. Johnny Daniel has been shaping up heads for more than a decade. <laughs> at Supreme's Barbershop in the heart of Henry County, Georgia. It was mostly Republican and then uh, I think when Obama came in, it started to shift. Which swung by more than 16 points for President Biden in 2020. I want to thank you, the people that. of Georgia. Stolen votes. And help Democrats flip the peach state for the first time in nearly 30 years. Hey, why did you vote for President Biden in the last Because election? of who he ran with, and he was in the White House for the eight previous years. I felt like he had the experience. But uh, definitively, right now, I couldn't tell you that if they open the polls tomorrow, I'm voting for Joe Biden. So what changed? <laughs> Life. <laughs> The right inflation answer. and the things that <laughs> we're going through right now. I want the right person so that I'm not paying eight dollars for eggs, fifteen dollars for gas. Even though things may be improving economically, but you feel there's a disconnect. Yeah, there is a disconnect. But the way these last three or four years have been, this is the worst it's ever been in my life. Mm. I never would have even considered thinking about voting for Donald Trump. But living in America these last four, it's a consideration. A consideration <laughs> that's reflected in some polls. While 77% of likely black voters say Dang. they intend to support Mr. Biden, former President Trump leads Biden in several battleground states, including Georgia, where he lost by roughly 12,000 votes and faces charges of election interference. That's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. The politics are an ongoing debate between Azad Ahmadi, a <laughs> member of the Georgia Black Republicans, and his girlfriend Alexandra, a I mean, registered Mises Democrat, leader of the who at times Georgia Black sit on Republican. opposite sides of the aisle. So even though you have political differences, it's not a deal breaker. No, it's not a deal breaker. Oh, oh wow. no, no, that's a absolutely not. So in 2008 and 2012, you voted for Barack Obama. Barack Obama. 2016. I voted for Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton. 2020. Donald Trump. Yeah. Biden. And who will you vote for in 2024? Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. Yeah! <laughs> I may vote for the former president. See, it woke okay. up. Hey, that's crazy. Why do you say that? My views on certain things have changed. I am very much so riding the fence. What are you struggling with? Being in a pattern of doing the same thing that I've been doing, because it's kind of like second nature. Like when you go in a, in a poll, you hit Democrat. Something has to happen. I mean, it's just so expensive to survive. And we're planning on having kids. I don't want to live in a stressful environment trying to rub two pennies together to try to make it either. Mm. When did you make Great that answer, decision sister. to check a different box? <sighs> Donald Trump's first term. I'm saying first term because I'm pretty sure he'll be in there. Uh, for a second term here soon. But in either case, post Obama, I decided that um, the party just wasn't suitable to the goals. That How I did you come to that conclusion? Because at the end of the day, former President Obama was the first African-American president in history. I saw Obama destroyed the black wealth. I saw a whole article on it. So that's why we supposed to like him, huh? He did good because he was the first black man ever in the Which Democrat party. Which is good. Party. Which that is, is good. Is a good I'll still give that. So I, they don't give Clarence Thomas that, uh, he's uh, because he's a black man. Supreme Court justice, they he's don't good. give him that same respect, so why should we give it they to Obama? They're trying to tear down his character. <laughs> Just a serious question. Let's keep Today, the Because they're racist, Former President Obama was the first African-American president in history. Soon. But in either case, post Obama, I decided that 
um, the party just wasn't suitable to the goals that How I How did you come to that conclusion? Because at the end of the day, former President Obama was the first African-American president in history. Yeah. This is true. I mean, as a black man, I would assume that meant something. Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I attended the inauguration on his first term. I grew up outside of Washington, D.C. in the 80s and 90s, came through the system as an institutional Democrat, went through a lot of the experiences that young black men go through, good and bad, ended up leaving that environment, grew up, started looking at the world through a new lens. Black men are a coveted demographic for both uh. parties. President Biden received 91% of the black vote wow. in 2020. Wow. Former President Trump only got eight. Wow. But black we men know why, supported though. him at three Bring times the rate of black women. Joe this Biden and Kamala Harris are investing the a record BLM 7 rise. billion yeah, into is. HBCUs. Huh? The Biden and Trump campaigns are also courting young voters who could be key something that is not lost yeah, on Clark these Atlanta. students at historically black Clark Atlanta University. What is the most important issue to you in this election? Austin Euler is a Democrat. Well, I think the biggest thing is start looking more in the house on our issues rather than always trying to be the world savior. Ajin Kaya Sumas is an independent. Protecting my rights as a black woman, my right to abortion, I don't think any man should have any say in what I choose to do with my body. And Jacob Jones is a Republican. If we can just take steps towards uh, clearing our debt, I feel like it'll be a better nation, a better country. How are you feeling about this election? <sighs> um, Trump 20, I don't know if you can see me sweating right now. It just, <laughs> just feels like it, it's the same as last time. And you're really basically forced to vote between <sighs> two older people. You use the word forced. <laughs> yeah, it, it does feel kind of forced. If, <laughs> if you go back to the Trump era, there's, a, there's always going to be something in the news. If you want to stick with the Biden so, era, you have to just deal with the fact that I feel like they are like a lot of people vape, already bro. have a viewpoint on him. All the good things he's done, it's hard to change someone's mind. As a younger voter, I don't want somebody who's many good generations things. ahead of me, Biden being one of the oldest presidents, and he's he's fairly older. Same with Trump. I think of President Biden, he kind of sold a dream that he couldn't accomplish. His famous quote was that for African American, you weren't black if you weren't didn't vote for Joe Biden. What do you think of former President Trump? I think President Trump was a bad people's person, but a great leader. He put our economy in a booming state. He provided a permanent funding for all HBCUs. This is also the same president who, when five minority young boys were arrested in New York for a crime they didn't even commit, he said that we it. need to bring back the death penalty. Pause. So from a moral... I'm so sick of the people bringing that argument up. Somebody tweeted me, this is the same president you guys are on Twitter supporting. I blocked this dumbass. First of all, if you saw that some people in your community was accused of doing something bad and you were leading your community, I'm going to say, I want the harshest penalty for them people. Yeah, you definitely Did they know at the time that. that they were not, were they innocent? No. So why do people keep bringing that up? Boo hooing. That's but, a terrible. But, and he got all the people out of jail like this, too. This, this fella in the man, white didn't answer perfectly. No, no, the black in the white cook. He, he answered it perfectly. I, think I might not like the guy, but he did great. So she, then she came with a dumber argument. Uh, no well, policy. Well, he the said argument is five never about how minorities need to die. Shut up. Uh, uh, these are the first people I actually said like her to say some policies about you know the Democrat Party that they like. I just and I, I think those were some dumbass policies they said. But you know, hey, if you like the policies, I just personally think that argument is just so tired. Like that's what you're going. I'm not going to vote for him because he said that they were committed to committing a horrible crime like, and they should get the death penalty. Well, if they committed a horrible crime, he wants them to get a harsh punishment. I think that. Should I mean, this, personally, this guy in the white shirt said, because uh, of debt. The girl in the red said, because of the abortion. And what did the other guy say? Did y'all remember? Fix our issues in house rather than trying to be the okay, world, okay, 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 okay. World savior. Hey, 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 oh, that's yeah. uh, you know. I think that's a good take. You know, pretty Republican for me yeah. from the, the guy in the black. Yeah, that sounded like it it is, yeah, Republican. Yeah, yeah. A bad people's person, but a great leader. He put our economy in a booming state. He provided a permanent funding for all HBCUs. This is also the same president who, when five minority young boys were arrested in New York for a crime they didn't even commit, so, said that we need to bring back the death true. penalty. So from a moral perspective, I can't agree or stand behind somebody when we have COVID-19 going around and you're calling it the Chinese flu.
how many it of came you from China. think that there should be a third like party ticket? <laughs> All of you, do you want to vote in this election? Oh, yes, I'm still going to vote. So you're not going to sit it out? No, I never do that. <laughs> I feel like sitting out and not voting is basically saying quiet and mute. Our vote is our voice. Sitting out is just basically you're not doing a justice to yourself. To help mm. close any potential enthusiasm gaps, black churches are taking the lead. Put me in that spiritual mode. Aisha Brooks Johnson and Cassandra Morrow head the Black Church Collective, an organization that is also prioritizing voter education. And you want to make sure you watch the same ballot as that. I like that. Before you walk off. After Georgia and several other states enacted new voting restrictions and redistricting maps. Just like the old African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes African a village proverb. for every vote to count. Mm. I like think the black same. church should always be a place where oh. it's safe, where you don't have to be embarrassed to say what you don't know. We often hear that black women are the backbone, particularly of the Democratic Party. How do you perceive that? I would say, you know, as black women, we're the backbone of oh, almost every everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's up with Carrie? Exactly, I mean, exactly, I'm like, exactly. It's because of the burdens we carry, the weight we carry, and that we're seeing it through multiple lenses of oppression. Let's get these voices out here. That's right. For grassroots groups like Black Voters Matter, the outreach has been ongoing kicking off the year in South Carolina for the first in the nation primary, a critical test of black support. Are y'all excited about going to vote? That's hard to run a community yeah. to do that. Black people are in it. <laughs> like, we're in it to win it. Latasha Brown is co-founder of the organization. When I look at black South Carolinians, they actually got right. more of a vote share, particularly in Democratic primary, than their white counterparts. Um, that literally that we showed up, even though all of the news was saying that we wouldn't show up, right? Do you feel this black voters are it. underestimated? Oh, absolutely. You can't continue to take black voters for granted and think that all you have to do is emotionally rouse Ain't us. Ain't that the same and lady in some with ways, the defund the police? To victory. We're beyond that. We want what everybody else wants. They say we want you need to pay for your own security. That are going to actually support and lift up our communities. I mean, well, from what she just said at the end, I wouldn't be surprised if that was I, I think they definitely are pushing voting for people to vote Democrat, but... Bro, did you see I, their freaking shirts? Yeah. They had the freaking trans the, flag yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, what you doing? So, you yeah, didn't I see that, bro? You didn't see the rainbow? There it is. Oh. See, look, right there. Right, right. Oh, for grassroots groups... Wow. Man, I can't... Man, why, 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 why? Don't group us okay, with so them. why are you guys trying to get people to vote and then tell them how to vote? Yeah, you that's think people are smart enough to make their own decisions? I just, how do we as black people continue to support a president that clearly does not care about us? I mean, I, I feel like all that matters is people are waking up, man. You know? They literally just apologized on TV for calling the guy who killed Lake and Riley an illegal immigrant. They said, they asked him after, they said, did you feel bad? He said, well, no, I, technically you're not supposed to be here. Then he goes, oh, yeah, that was wild. Day, I apologize for what I said. No, that was insane. They built this country. Illegal I, I don't think black people are country. seeing all that, though, bro. Joe a lot Biden. of a lot of that people are seeing that, bro. I'm they're not gonna just, say let's go, Brandon. They're, they're not seeing all the you know details of what Joe Biden is doing, unless you're deep in the politics. Yeah, man. Bro, uh, I a feel lot like of it's getting exposed. Going crazy at church today. Everything's the pastor exposed. said you should take a cleanse for a week from the news. He said it's not. He said, can you even call it news? It just seems like it's just one of the others' propaganda. Nah, seriously. Oh, I preaching. said, pastor. I said, ooh, pastor. Nah, he preaching. Take a week, you know, hey, and you will feel purged. This you will feel an cleansed. overly woke video, though. Like I expected. I mean, I you know. BET, they own network, so you know they can push what they want. I mean, push. at the end though, they start popping up this the little, democratic grassroots yeah, group. I thought the church scene was gonna be way better than that. We really should have stopped. I think to, people should vote though. People. But I just feel like don't push a narrative on which way to vote if you're gonna encourage people to vote. Yeah, if you're trying to actually help black people, don't push a narrative. But they think they are. Yeah, so it's like not. it's. it's but I mean, hey, you know, everybody think they help you. You know, parties better. Might as well push that narrative. You know, but we are obviously people can't think for themselves already. So you know. So you gotta push a little narrative sometimes. You know, everybody feel like they're helping somebody in some, you know, yeah. form or way. They feel like they're doing right. Can't get mad at them for that. No, no one's, no one. Knows. I like those college kids though. They were speaking, you know. I like 
old boy on the right. Yeah, the guy on the white. The other guy wasn't too bad either. The girl, you know, you know, she was using enough feelings more like girls too. But that's that's very expected. But you know, guys, we just gotta keep waking more people. They call up. you a. Um, I think it's getting better. Misogynist. Though. Yeah, you've been a misogynist for that. See, man, you know, I think it's people that actually deal with money and see how the inflation is rising. Like if you're a young person, you really don't notice that something like that. So oh, yeah, it's people with good. businesses that really you understand. Notice it when you fill up that tank, because when I talk to black people about it, they're they're just like, I just had way more money in my pocket. That's the that's their main reason that they're switching over to Trump. Now because he's a good guy, now because he's a bad guy. It's the people with you know hardworking people out here that got a little common sense. You know these other people that still well, I guess they could know that the inflation is still bad and they still just want to be idiots. I just don't understand how you could be directly affected by some. They gonna blame it on racism. Not want to make. They gonna change. find a way. Yeah, it's, it's due to the oppression. It doesn't matter what, man. They don't have to bring it up. Why they just can't get hurt? I don't know, guys. Let us know if y'all thought this was a good video, man. I definitely think Black America's waking up, guys. We're out of here.